All right, quickly, raise your hand if uh, you've ever heard that exercise is good for you. Okay, good, we're, we're all on the same page here. Uh, you gotta be dead, even this little guy has heard that, right? And um, uh, again, I'm a scorecard kind of guy, and this is the next medical dogma lie we're gonna look at. If exercise is good for you, then uh, it should uh, show up in studies. And so I began to look for studies that would show that exercise helps you live longer. There's not a single study which shows that exercise helps you live longer. And when I started looking into that, I found that there's never been a single professional athlete ever lived to be 100. My red flags began to go up because if exercise was good for you, there should be a significant percentage of professional athletes living to be 100 because nobody exercises more than professional athletes, and they get paid to do it, you know, so they're not gonna cheat. Well, you start looking at some of the famous athletes that should have done well, people like Jesse Owens, the first man to ever win four gold medals in the Olympics, in the same Olympics, he died at 66. And then you have people like uh, Jesse, um, um, let's see, uh, Jim Thorpe and Red Grange, and there was Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig and uh, Sugar Ray Robinson. Uh, Wilt Chamberlain just died a couple of years ago at age 63 of congestive heart failure in a hospital while they're trying to stabilize him so he could have two hip replacement surgeries so the doctor could get famous. Yep, and then Flojo died at 34. And then in 1995, uh, the darlings of the uh, figure skating world, uh, the, the Grinkoff, Sergei Grinkoff and his wife, they'd won four gold medals in the previous year, two in the Olympics and two in the World Games. And he dies at age 28 in a heart attack in November of 1995. Cardiomyopathy heart attack, a simple deficiency of the trace mineral selenium. And then Reggie Lewis, captain of the Boston Celtics, 4% body fat, as fit as a human being could be. Great young man. Died at age 27 of a cardiomyopathy heart attack, a simple selenium deficiency. I have two more to share with you, and then I'll tell you why athletes don't fare so well. This next fellow was not a professional athlete, but he was a serious athlete. He was a professional, so I'm gonna throw him in here and you'll see why. Uh, his name was uh, Dr. James Cornyn. He was a cardiologist from Paradise, California, which is about an hour's car ride north of um, uh, San Francisco. His wife was a cardiologist. They had two cardiologists under the same roof, okay? And they were exercise freaks. They'd wake up in the morning two hours before they were supposed to be at the clinic in the hospital to see patients and do their surgeries. And they would jog for two hours in the, the paths through the redwoods and the big pines and watch the skunks and the butterflies and the birds and the deers and they would find their way down to the hospital and they'd take their showers and get in their scrubs and have breakfast together. They only had two meals a day because they wanted to stay slim and fit. Uh, they would have breakfast and dinner together and over the lunch hour when the weather was nice, they would rollerblade through town and play tennis and when the weather was uh, rainy or drizzly or inclement, they would play racquetball indoors and, and run on an indoor track. Uh, they rock climbed indoors and outdoors. They downhill skied, cross country skied. Uh, they would go every summer for a couple of weeks up to Alaska and hike up in the high mountains. And being two cardiologists under the same roof, they would do everything right. They'd watch each other and make sure they did everything right because they loved each other. And I'm sure they took their aspirin every day to keep their blood thin. I'm sure they took their cholesterol, lowering drugs, Mevacor, Lipitor, and Loped to get their cholesterol down below 200. I'm sure uh, they didn't eat salt. I'm sure they didn't eat eggs. I'm sure they did not eat red meat. They ripped the chicken skin off their chicken before they ate it. They didn't take any vitamins, minerals, and trace minerals because they believe you can get everything you need by eating your basic four food groups. And despite doing everything right, despite having two cardiologists under the same roof, Dr. James Cornyn dies at age 48 of a heart attack. Now, if you were one of his heart patients, would you continue to do what he was asking you to do? No, I wouldn't. I'd do just the opposite because I wouldn't want to get what he got, right? <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't even go look at him in the box, okay? Now, <laughs> if he said that 30 minutes of exercise a day was good for you, I'd turn out to be one of those pantomime guys, you know? That would be my level of exercise. I wouldn't even blink during the waking day. If he said no eggs, I'd be eating 25 eggs a day. I would do just the opposite of what he said because I wouldn't want to get what he got. And that's the way we have to think, okay? If, if, the, if the results aren't coming out the way the doctor says, then he's giving you bad advice. Now, the last one I have to share with you was a guy who was a coach and an athlete. His name was Dr. Tom Dowling. He was a PhD type of doctor, and he was from Kansas City, Missouri, and he taught uh, uh, track and field and coached track and field in uh, 
high schools and junior colleges, and he tried to cover all his bases. Uh, he was a vegan, a vegetarian that did not eat any animal products whatsoever. He only ate perfect mixes of grains, legumes, vegetables, fruits, and nuts. This man was considered a master at practicing and teaching yoga around the world. Uh, he um, ran the marathon every month, 26.2 miles every month for 25 years. I mean, this guy was a, a dedicated long distance runner. And he did that to show his students if they wanted to be a world class athlete, they had to be dedicated and not miss their practices and so forth. And he was very well thought of. He was always considered Mr. Fitness in the town of Kansas City, Missouri. And when he was 47 years old, Tom Dowling got an irregular heartbeat and he did what he thought was the righteous thing to do. He went to the top cardiologist in Kansas City, Missouri, who put him on a treadmill. And he did the treadmill, the stress test, and an hour after the treadmill, he drops dead of a heart attack. Now, you could say, come on, Wallach, you're picking out, you're picking out extraordinary events. Now, this is very common. According to the Center for Disease Control, 100,000 kids under the age of 30 in America die each year from heart attacks and other sudden causes of death during athletic events, 100,000 a year. According to the Center for Disease Control, 300,000 Americans die each year over the age of 30 while they're exercising or participating in some sport. And his coach was a guy by the name of Jim Fix. How many of you heard of Jim Fix? Sure, well, Jim Fix was the guy who started the whole personal fitness program idea back in the 1970s. He believed if you ran 10 miles a day, you were going to live to be 100. And he purposely, consciously excluded even vitamin-enriched foods because he didn't want to muddy the water and have people say, well, it was the vitamins you were taking. So he consciously avoided all um, vitamin-containing enriched foods. He only ate raw foods and he was a, he was a vegetarian. And Jim Fix um, was the really the creator of um, Nike shoes and Reeboks and all these sporting equipment and, and all the various health clubs and gyms and this very uh, all this equipment you see marketed on television. Without Jim Fix there wouldn't be any of that. He was the guy that started that whole thing. Well Jim Fix died at age 52 of a heart attack. Now why is it that all of America, 300 million people, believe that fitness is good when the guy who started the whole thing died at age 52 of a heart attack? Well, that's because Nike and Reebok that's because all these gyms aren't going to come to you and say, well, Jim Fix was wrong. And we're just going to shut down our businesses and go away because he was wrong. They built up this huge infrastructure and the whole thing is based on, you know, they've got employees, they've got businesses and so forth. And so they're going to keep marketing and keep the business alive. And so you have to be smarter than that. Well, the reason why athletes don't fare so well is because athletes sweat more in five years and couch potatoes doing 75 years. When you're sweating, you're not just sweating out water, you're sweating out a soup that contains all 60 essential minerals. They're called essential minerals because if any of them are missing for any length of time, you get some horrible degenerative disease, many of which are life-threatening. So this is a no-brainer. Who's more likely to die of one of these life-threatening mineral deficiency diseases? An athlete who's sweating out quarts and quarts of this mineral-rich soup every day, or a couch potato in an air-conditioned den laying on the couch belching and farting and eating popcorn and surfing through the channels but not sweating. Who's going to live longer? The couch potato is going to live longer than the athlete and that's what statistics show. And if you're sweating, whether it's from work, if you're a roofer, a carpenter, a farmer, or if you're a plumber, an electrician, if you're a carpet layer, you're, you're a dance instructor, you work in a bakery, if you're sweating or you're a, a um, uh, amateur athlete or professional athlete and you're just drinking water, are you replacing the minerals you're sweating out. No, not even close. What about iced tea? Nope. What about some of these coffees, you know, the polka mocha lattes and all those kind of things? Not even close. Uh, what about all these diet drinks and Coca-Colas and Pepsi-Colas and so forth? Mountain Dew, Dr. Pepper, are you replacing all those 90 essential nutrients, the 60 essential minerals? No. You might get one mineral, phosphoric acids, in these soft drinks. And then, uh-oh, we got a drug dealer. At any rate, um, Hmm, where was I? Oh, soft drinks, thank you. I just finished soft drinks. So he's going to edit this out, so we'll have a little laugh over it. At any rate, um, if it's not soft drinks, what about Gatorade and Powerade? Gatorade and Powerade. Are those the answer? No, they're only electrolytes, sugar, and yellow and blue dye number three, five, and eight. Okay, what are electrolytes? Well, electrolytes are nothing but salt water. When doctors want you to consume salt, they say drink electrolytes. When they don't want you to have salt, it's sodium. Isn't that funny? They even use a different voice. That's sodium. Don't want to drink that, eat that sodium. But electrolytes are okay. Okay? And so 
um, those aren't, they're going to give you three of the minerals you need, um, sodium, chloride, and potassium. Where are you going to get the other 57? See? Sweating for any reason and not replacing the minerals you're sweating out is suicide. Sweating for any reason and not replacing the minerals you're sweating out will cut your lifespan in half. Just that one thing will cut your lifespan in half. Now the next medical dogma lie we have to look at has to do with um, hypertension, high blood pressure and salt. 